This is John Nearing. We'll go ahead and start the meeting in about two minutes. Thanks, everyone. Councilmember Todd, this is Jerry. Did you get uh, an e Lori Fox's email this afternoon? Okay, good. Just making sure. Thanks. All right, welcome everybody to the uh, August 6th meeting of the Board of Directors. Can, uh, can everybody hear me okay? Great. Um, a few opening comments and then we will get started uh, with the meeting today. Um, this meeting is obviously being held virtually as uh, most of all of our meetings are in these times. Um, and it's in accordance with the governor's stay home order proclamation 20-28. Public comments were collected in writing and were provided to the board in advance of today's meeting. Um, I want to thank those of you who submitted comments for the record, both Joe Kunzler and Jenny Anderson, and uh, encourage the board to, to read those. And there will be uh, staff follow up where it was requested. This meeting is being audio, rec audio recorded for members of the public who wish to record the medium. Uh, the meeting, excuse me, you are welcome to do so. To record, please click on the participants tab and click yes by your name. Um, a reminder for board members and presenters, if you could keep your phone and computer on mute unless you're speaking, that would help all of us. If you are joining by phone, you can use star six to mute and to unmute. The slides that are referenced in this meeting can be found on the website next to the meeting agenda. And for right now, would the clerk please call the roll? Mayor Elizabeth Callahan. Here. Council member Kim Daughtry. Present. Council member Tom Merrill. Present. Council member Nate Nearing. Here. Sorry, I'm mute. <laughs> there you are. Thank you. Mayor John Nearing. Here. Thank you. Labor Representative Lance Norton. I'm here, thank you. Council Member Jan Schwedy. Uh, here. Mayor Nicholas Smith. Here. Council Member Mike Todd. Okay. Here. Okay, thank you. And Council Member Stephanie Wright. I'm here, good afternoon. Thank you. Uh, Chair, we do have a quorum. Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, for our first presentation, I'm going to turn it over to CEO Emmett Heath, where we're gonna recognize somebody very special to us. Che uh, CEO Heath. Um, Thank you. Mr. Chair, Chairman, Thank you. Mr. No, Chairman. No, 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 no. Point of order, I cannot record the meeting. I've put in yes on, on there. Um, we'll get that to you right away. Thank, Thank you, you, Rachel. Appreciate it, Rachel. Go ahead, CEO Heath. Thank you, Mayor Nearing. I see from the participant list that Mayor Leonard Kelly should be online with us. With the screen shared, I can't see his face and I would love to, but 
Um, <clears throat> for those of you who have been in our boardroom, if you could uh, imagine for a moment that I'm leaving the dais and walking up to where I normally make our service award presentations, and uh, I'm inviting Mayor Leonard Kelly to join me up there. There he is. Thanks for joining me, Mayor. We wanted to take a few minutes uh, at the top of today's meeting and honor Mayor Kelly for his service on our governing board. Leonard, uh, really great that you could join us this afternoon. Thanks for doing that. Leonard, for those of you uh, who may not be as, uh, as well acquainted with uh, the mayor as we are, began as uh, mayor of Stanwood in 2013, and he started on our board shortly thereafter in 2014. During his tenure on our board, he has served in all of our board leadership positions, uh, going through the rotation as secretary, as chair, uh, vice chair, chair, immediate past chair, and most recently was continuing to serve on the executive committee as vice chair. Uh, many of us have a lot of special memories of times we've spent with Leonard. One that's not in my script, but one that is at uh, top of mind for me was one of the first uh, business trips I took with, uh, with the mayor. It was to a once every three year APTA convention in Los Angeles, where the entire Los Angeles Convention Center was full multiple floors top to bottom with uh, transit industry equipment. I recall after, the, uh, after that event, we were back in the boardroom, the mayor was talking about his experience down there and he was saying how, uh, how surprised and amazed he was. I remember his comment, he said, I thought you just hired a driver and bought a bus and that was public transit. But I think it was a, a real, uh, a, an amazing introduction to him, all of the complexities and uh, everything that it takes to operate uh, a mid-sized urban public transit system like our own. We've had a lot of other great memories with the mayor over the years, um, state of the city addresses and Stanwood, um, community transit events over the past six years. I thought the, over the years, the mayor's experience as a commercial driver, uh, many times we heard him uh, talk about his experience <clears throat> driving for United Parcel Service, his experience as a union business agent, his uh, continuing service as secretary of the Snohomish Labor Council. Those were special skills and, a, and special voices that he brought to many conversations on our, our governing board. And it was also a very valuable resource to me in that regard. Also, uh, remember opening the green line. And Rachel, I think we may have some photos there of the beginning and the end. On the left, um, turning dirt for the first time to kick off our swift green line construction. And a couple years later, um, on the right-hand side, finishing off with the grand opening of our swift green line. Leonard's had a lot of passion um, for providing uh, opportunities for youth in the community. In particular, his, uh, his role in starting up an activity called Trade Up. Um, equal, similar to what uh, a lot of you might recognize as kind of a touch a truck kind of event where uh, the mayor and his colleagues arranged for representatives from various trade and craft organizations around the region to bring their trade and craft equipment to put it on display at local high schools um, and, uh, and encourage uh, participation, high school students to consider uh, good careers in trades and crafts. I believe we participated in the inaugural trade up event and I believe we have been present for each and every one since then. And we look forward to continuing to participate in those kind of activities. Um, another special memory um, and I believe we may have a picture of this, if I'm not mistaken, this was Atlanta. Uh, the, mayor, uh, the mayor visited several of our APTA conventions and always made a note to uh, explore the latest, uh, the latest contraptions on the public transportation scene. Um, this is one where he discovered the, uh, the, the onset of electric scooters in urban environments. He tested one out on the streets of Atlanta. Um, I think uh, Deb, our, our own Deb Osborne may have been uh, with him for this initial test drive, but he was uh, so enthralled with the benefits of this form of public transportation that he actually bought one, brought it back to the next community transit board meeting, 
And after the meeting, we all went out front and got to uh, have a demonstration of the mayor's new electric scooter. Uh, I love that story because it demonstrates the enthusiasm and the passion that he had for our business here at Community Transit. Leonard, um, I can easily get emotional because I have so thoroughly enjoyed uh, getting to know you, working with you, uh, seeking counsel from you, uh, and getting good advice. So I want to thank you on behalf of the citizens of Snohomish County, uh, the staff at Community Transit, and myself for being a fantastic board member, a good friend to our agency. Uh, thank you very much for your service. We wish you uh, all the best in your future endeavors. Leonard, thank you very much. Mayor Nearing, back to you, and perhaps the mayor or your colleagues would like to share some of their own thoughts. Thank you. Thank you, uh, CEO Heath. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll piggyback on that, uh, Leonard, by just telling you, first of all, your friend, you know, how much I value your friendship, but just your partnership um, on this board and as a, a fellow mayor in the community. Um, you have done an absolutely amazing job. You've been great for community transit and just great for the county as a whole. Um, you'll be greatly missed. Uh, I too have had the opportunity to, um, to travel to one of the uh, uh, community transit um, board meetings with Leonard and uh, enjoyed some, some similar uh, fun times that, that Emmett just uh, described. But I think, you know, one of Leonard's um, uh, great assets is that he is so well liked by everybody from all walks and he's able to cut through a lot of the uh, uh, unfortunate partisanship and divide that exists in today's world and just figure out a way to get to solution oriented things with uh, people from all circles and that's a real skill and it's also just I think a natural trait of somebody who just he just likes people and he's just a very personable and trustworthy individual so uh, Emmett, you're going to be greatly missed. I will miss having you on this board and miss having you uh, at all our other uh, fellow mayor meeting events, but uh, hopefully we will keep in touch. And thanks for your service. I'll open it up to um, some other board members. If anybody wishes to um, speak, I can't uh, see everybody at once here, but just feel free to pop in if you're a board member and wish to say something. Okay, I'll go. Thanks, Leonard, for everything you uh, did on CT as Mayor of Stanwood, uh, all of your community services. Uh, thank you for your participation and your and your generosity in getting back to school supplies for Lake Stevens and Granite Falls uh, and others uh, through the years. And uh, I consider you a friend and I'm gonna miss you. Thank you, Councilmember Daughtry. This is Nicola. I don't know, Leonard, how you participated in all in all that you did and the way that you showed up uh, with your positive attitude and willingness to do things down to our um, Snohomish County Cities meetings when we got to use your labor hall. And you were the one that put the tables out and put the tablecloths on and ordered the food and served the food and did the cleanup and set the chairs around. And, um, I just uh, really appreciated how you um, are a service above self guy and uh, you know that I will uh, miss you very much but we said we were going to stay in touch and I do have your phone number so there thank you Mayor Smith if I may this is Lance I'd like to say a few words yes thank you Am I recognized, Chair? You are, yes. Thank you, uh, Labor Representative Norton. Leonard, I just wanted to say uh, how much I appreciated your, uh, your good sense of humor many times. As you know, we both come from the same side of the street, unions and stuff. And there were times when we didn't always agree, but uh, you always maintained uh, a, a reasonable decorum, as I say. And uh, perhaps I didn't at times, but uh, you've forgiven me and I want you to know how much I appreciated uh, uh, your service and uh, and allowing me uh, uh, to express myself on certain issues. And and uh, I think I spoke to you recently about uh, 
the blood pressure. Just keep that baby down, boy. <laughs> Anyhow, thanks so much. Thank you, Labor Representative Norton. Chair Nary, is Mike Todd may I speak? Absolutely. Go ahead, Council Member. Thank you. I've got a bad bandwidth, so if I sound horrible, I apologize. But I just want to pile on a little bit. Thank Leonard for all the things he's done, both for this organization and for the city's group in general. And when we needed to figure out a fun meal that wasn't going to cost us the fortune, we could all count on Leonard to come up with his own restaurant, bring his own equipment, and as Nicholas said, set up the chairs, take down the tables, first in, last out. He was always there with passion and enthusiasm. The, Emmett, the words that Emmett used earlier are exactly true. Everything I've ever done with Leonard has been so much whether we're traveling, whether we're talking seatmates before a board meeting, working on city stuff, it's been a pleasure, and I really will miss him, but hope to see him in our community. Next time we have an Oak Creek Festival, Leonard, we need to see you there. Thanks. Thank you, Councilman Todd. If I may, Mayor, uh, just uh, very quickly, this is Emmett. I forgot one of my favorite memories. I, I did... We did have a slide of the mayor participating in the Green Line uh, opening, grand opening. If you were there, uh, we had a fantastic band at that event. This goes uh, in the category of other duties as assigned. When we were out in the community looking for a band, I mean, where else would you go to look for a good band but to the mayor of Stanwood, right? And the mayor was able to uh, to find this band who came down and helped us celebrate the grand opening. Uh, not only did he find them, but he was there a couple hours early to help them set up and make, make sure they had everything they needed to help make that grand opening a uh, success. That goes in the, again in the category of uh, other duties as assigned and, and really going the extra mile. I also know that the mayor worked very closely over the years with Deb Osborne and Rachel Woods from our staff, a very close relationship. And I would like to say if either Deb or Rachel, uh, mayor, if you would indulge, if either Deb or Rachel uh, would like to share anything, I'd like them uh, to have that offer. Well, thank you, Emmett. Uh, what, a, what an honor to do this. Thank you very much. Uh, so, Leonard, uh, I think it, it's not overly complicated. What I'll remember most about you is just how enjoyable it is to work with you. You are fun and supportive, full of ideas. It's, it, it's just really been a pleasure. And you're a great travel partner uh, on these APTA conferences. What I appreciate is that you're involved in all the sessions and getting all the information, starting to formulate ideas about how they might work back in our neck of the woods and those great conversations after each session going, well, what if we did it this way or that way? And uh, you know, that's just great public service to not just be on the board, but to immerse yourself in the industry, to learn about it and to share um, uh, our message with the community. So thank you. I will miss working with you very much. Thank you, Deb. And if I could just say one thing, I wanted to thank Leonard. Uh, I came from another industry to be the clerk of the board and Leonard was the chair my very first year. So I just, um, and he, he welcomed me, so he was so patient, kind, fun to work with, and I'll never uh, forget that first year. Uh, and I just wish you the best, Leonard, and I'll miss, I'll miss our time working together. Thank you, Rachel. Any other comment from board members or staff? This is Nate, can you hear me okay? Yes, go ahead. Okay, great. Well, Leonard, I just want to thank you so much for all your service to the city of Stanwood. Uh, just a great job as mayor and I uh, want to thank you for your friendship and your mentorship too. Uh, I know you've uh, followed me from, you know, when I started the planning commission in Stanwood and, and always been just a tremendous mentor for me. And so I really appreciate that. 
And I think one of the things I've appreciated most is your focus on working with youth, whether it's through uh, the pre-apprenticeship program or the trade-up events that you've led. And those have just had such a great impact on, uh, on high schoolers and others who you've worked with. And I'm certainly going to miss our uh, meetings at Wayne's. And so we'll have to continue to get together at Wayne's every so often. But thanks so much for your service. Thanks, Councilman Nuri. One final call before we open it up for Leonard if he wants to say anything. All right, Leonard, the floor is yours if you wish to uh, say anything. Well, you know, I, I didn't think, uh, I get this emotional. Uh, you know, I've been contemplating this for about nine months now. I've just known, and uh, it's tough. And and you know, there's the the guilt. This is number one about leaving early of a commitment. And then the second thing was uh, leaving CT. I learned so much there. Uh, I've said it before, made me a better mayor, made me a better person. Uh, wonderful board members, staff, frontline people. Uh, it's a great organization and it's a shame that people don't understand how integral and how important community transit is to Snohomish County as a whole. And it's not just to ride on a bus, but, but all the far reaching aspects of what and how important transit is. And, and I learned that a lot. Um, geez, I really enjoyed all the board members and, and you know, we had some good times and, and did some really good things. And, and uh, uh, I learned from a lot of people and, and um, I'm happy to see that Elizabeth from Stanwood is going to be part of the board there. Uh, uh, she'll learn a lot, and, and I'm happy for her, and, and I think she'll be a great representative of Stanwood and the small cities. Uh, she'll do it with a little more decorum than with what I did, uh, but um, I, I, she's, she's a good person, and I'm so happy to see her there. Uh, thank you, everybody, for you know, all the wonderful comments. Uh, you know, I always have CT in my heart. I always be an advocate. And, you know, it was just an hour ago, I was on the uh, uh, advisory task force committee meeting for Snohomish County for economic recovery. And one of the topics that, that came up that we were talking about was, um, you know, displaced workers and, you know, the different plans that we maybe could implement and targeting displaced workers and, and finding other jobs for them. And immediately I'm thinking, well, wait a minute. We have CT drivers that are displaced as school bus drivers, but we're gonna need them back, you know? And, and, we, and we had a shortage before, we were scrambling before. So no matter what I'm doing, no matter where I'm at, I'll be uh, advocating for CT. And Kim, I'm gonna need help here in a couple of weeks getting those school supplies out to uh, Sultan and Granite Falls. You let That's me know, you know, I'll be there. Yeah, thank you all so much. Thank you, uh, Leonard, um, thank you very much. And we appreciate all that you've done as you've heard here today. Um, with that, we will move on then to, we have uh, one other presentation from the Washington State Transit Insurance Pool, and that is uh, Tracy Christensen. Uh, CEO Heath, were you going to uh, kick this off or should I turn it directly over to uh, Tracy? A very brief introduction of uh, Tracy, uh, if I may. I think yeah. I've shared with the board before that uh, I meet personally with every new employee that joins our agency. And one of the things I tell them about our safety culture is that I hope they come to work um, physically, mentally, and emotionally healthy every day, and that they go home at the end of that day 
even healthier in all regards. Um, that's my way of starting them off with an, an understanding and an expectation of a world-class safety culture. And I'm pleased to introduce today the executive director of the Washington State Transit Insurance Pool, who provides all of our insurance and brokerage claims uh, and adjusting services to present an award to the agency. So please welcome Tracy Christensen, Executive Director of WSTIP. Thank you, Emmett. Good afternoon, everybody. Chair Nearing and all the Board of Directors and all the staff that are on today. Thank you so much for letting me come to your virtual board meeting. Because uh, I'm here today to present your uh, to Community Transit the 2019 Safety Star Award. This award is to recognize. Um, I'm sorry, now my screen doesn't want to move. Just a sec. I'm going to stop my share for just a sec and try again. So just a sec. Can everybody still hear me? Yes, we can. Perfect, thank you. I apologize for that little technical difficulty. This award's to recognize uh, member agencies who maintain impressive and stable safety records. Uh, we structure the award to recognize um, all three WISTIP rating categories, which is small, medium, and large agency. To receive the best in class requires a organizational commitment to safety, it's a life cycle that includes training and hiring, operating, supervising, um, encouraging, identifying where you can get better and providing refresher training, and doing all this while keeping your community safe and accessible and convenient and friendly transportation services that really enhance the quality of life in your service area. And you might think, well, we're a big agency, so it's easy to win this award, and it really isn't. Just, uh, it is a competitive process which it evaluates the performance in terms of auto liability losses. And members with the best um, ratio of actual auto, auto liability losses, and that's uncapped, meaning we're, we're counting everything that we're uh, spending on your behalf relative to the pool as a percentage um, of the miles travels are awarded the award. And the 2019 award is based on the claims activity or data from the period of 2014 and 2018 through 2018. Here's a quick look at how you stack up against your size group. And so I, I want to really try to emphasize that uh, how much better you're doing than your peer group. So it is a wonderful thing to see that community transit has done this, but really you probably want to know what is it that you get. So you do get a great crystal trophy, which I understand that we have a picture of uh, there that Rachel has that she can share with you. You also get $5,000 for employee recognition. And I wanted to let you know that this is not the first time that you've gotten this. Uh, you in fact, have won on three previous occasions. So thank you so much to all your fellow, uh, to you and from all your fellow transit agencies on behalf of the Washington State Transit Insurance Pool. Thank you for making safety such a top priority in your organization and congratulations for being the winner of the 2019 Safety Star Award. Just a quick note, here's the winners in the other two categories. Not that you super care, but just thought you'd want to know. Thank you. Thank you for that. We appreciate it. 
And with that, uh, under the information portion of the agenda, we will start with the COVID-19 update from CEO Heath. Um, thank you. As I have been doing, I'll break my report into two parts, an update on COVID activities, and then at the end of the meeting, uh, the rest of my CEO report. Um, in addition to these monthly updates to you, I will continue to make sure we communicate with you if there are any uh, significant activities that take place uh, during the course of the month. Um, quickly on ridership, I, I'll let you know today that from uh, the low point in our ridership decline was back in April. Uh, since about May, our ridership has been recovering very slowly, very modestly, but most recently uh, we have recovered, uh, restored 21% of that lost ridership. We're still providing uh, approaching 15,000 boardings a day, largely to people who are accessing essential jobs, uh, running errands, or attending medical services. We know from surveying our customers, those are the three main reasons why those 15,000 people are riding every day. Get to work, run essential errands, and attend medical appointments. Regarding our service levels, nothing has changed significantly since my report a month ago. Um, what I described last month in the end was that uh, we're working, we are on schedule, working towards an implementation of a new service plan uh, September 20th of this year. That service plan will be at a level that is approximately 85% of what we were operating pre-COVID, and we're on schedule for a successful implementation of that plan in September. <laughs> we also expect that we'll be able to sustain that plan uh, into and through 2021. Operationally, we're continuing regular contact with uh, health, with the uh, Centers for Disease Control, uh, with the state health department, and locally with the Snohomish Health District. Those regular visits are intended to make sure that we are keeping pace with all of the emerging best practices around uh, ways to mitigate uh, against the uh, possible infection from COVID. Um, uh, continuing on the subject of safety, Employee safety has been top of mind for us since day one and continues to be. And that is especially true for our coach operators. Uh, may have described last month, but I'll remind briefly that we provide the now infamous KN95 or N95 masks to all of our coach operators. Um, that the provision of those masks complies with the state, with the governor's statewide proclamation, also with labor and industry requirements. And then we also provide a choice of four options of face shields that coach operators can choose from to use in addition to a face mask. And that provides a level of safety over and above uh, that required by state uh, labor and industries. We've also continued to test the plexiglass barriers between coach operators uh, and boarding passengers. We've lately, <coughs> excuse me, we've recently completed uh, testing those barriers for now. Uh, we have surveyed our coach operators on a regular basis. And what we've learned is that a majority of our coach operators would like to have those barriers in place. Although a majority also report concerns uh, about visual impairment from glare and glinting uh, from light sources that could interfere with, uh, with their visibility. So we're going to continue to look for ways to engineer around the, uh, the glare and glint issues. Um, if we can find a way to provide a barrier that doesn't comprom potentially compromise uh, the, uh, the clear vision of the coach operator, um, then we'll, we'll continue to be looking. Um, an example, uh, our new chief operating officer, and I'll, I'll mention, come back to that in a moment, Steve Kim uh, has an appointment on his calendar uh, to go with his colleagues down to King County Metro next week and um, look at, inspect a new version of a barrier um, that Metro is working on that they think might help mitigate this uh, visual impairment problem with glare and glint. Regarding COVID cases, um, we had, um, we've had 17 total positive tests. 15 of those uh, positives occurred in the, in the five months ended in June. Between February and June, we had 15 positives. Since June, we've had uh, two more in July and zero 
in August. And largely our experience with inf inf infections has mirrored the experience across greater Snohomish County. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to Jerry Beardsley in just a moment for an update on our financial circumstance, but I will tell you from my perspective, uh, we have successfully reestablished a sustainable cost structure. Um, we expect that based on what we know today that our financial future looks very stable. Um, and based on, on our forecasts at this point, we fully expect that in October, we will deliver a budget to you that meets all of our usual financial sustainability goals. With that, I'll turn it over to Jerry for a little more update on finances. Excuse me, uh, <clears throat> Chair, I have some questions for Emmett, uh, if I may, before we go to uh, Jerry. Yes, uh, Labor Representative Norton, go ahead. To be fair, Emmett I, don't Emmett, I don't expect you to have all answers to my questions, but rather than delay the meeting later when we are, are getting close to adjourn, I'd like to get some concerns um, that have been brought to uh, uh, not only me, but, but to the union. Um, and as I said, I, you know, your job is extremely difficult. I, I hopefully would request that some others uh, would be uh, tapped in for their information. So as I understand it, community transit operators are required to wear a mask while operating uh, the bus. That's true, correct? Correct. Okay. And then the uh, passengers are not required to wear a mask when they get on. But yet, a lot of times in the front of the coach, it says that uh, please, masks are required. But they're not really required since anybody can get on without a mask and ride. Is that true? I would say that that is true nationwide in all sectors. Um, it's very common that institutions state that the use of a mask is required, but they do not ask their staff to enforce it. Uh, our strategy has been to communicate to make sure that people understand the benefits of wearing the mask, communicate to make sure they understand by virtue of the governor's proclamation, it is state law, uh, communicate that we expect them to wear them. We also have complimentary masks on board and when people do not wear masks, we provide them with a complimentary mask and ask them to wear it. After all that, if they decline, uh, we do not ask our coach operators or other staff to move into any kind of enforcement mode. Yeah, um, we are aware of that. Although many businesses uh, today are requiring people to either do business at that business or if they don't uh, uh, abide by the uh, masks are uh, required, uh, there, there can be a penalty, they're just turned away. I'm not strongly advocating at this point, but reading the uh, transit police report for the second quarter, and I will quote quickly, during a period of no fare collection, transit police transitioned to a phase of being highly visible along a swift route and at transit stations to help prevent slash mitigate problems in the system. I understand also that there, um, has been an increase in the amount of transit police hours. Are you aware of that? I'm not exactly sure what that refers to. We have recently, in a pre-COVID decision, added additional deputies to our transit police force that now totals 19 deputies and staff. So you are aware of an increase. It was part of our 2020 budget proposal to the board uh, about a year ago. Okay. Yes. All right. Well, what, what I'm a little um, unnerved about is uh, speaking to a number of the uh, SWIFT drivers, uh, as the union has recently, uh, many of the operators are saying they don't see transit police out there. They don't see road supervisors out there. And especially on the swift routes at night, they don't see them at all. If there's an increase in hours, and I would imagine uh, hours not just for 
not just for one or two, then where are they out there? Because operators are getting a little unnerved about this. Yeah, I think I can add some, shed some light on that. First of all, it is a big county. And while there are 19 of them at any one time, because they operate uh, almost 20 hours a day, seven days a week, there's usually in the peaks, three or four of them covering uh, on shift, covering out in the field, covering the county. Uh, we also, we know from our surveys on board, we have people actually writing and counting that system wide 98%, 98 to 100% of all of the customers on our system are wearing masks. Where we, where we have an outlier is on the swift blue line. For whatever reason, uh, there is a higher incidence of customers declining to wear masks on the swift blue line. Um, one reason I, I have those statistics is because um, checking for masks is an emphasis area for our transit supervisors. I did see a report earlier today and Steve Kim could speak to this. We keep track of the total number of hours that our transit supervisors are in service in the field, how many times they board a bus, how many times they uh, engage in uh, encouraging customers to wear masks. Additionally, earlier this week, our entire executive leadership team met, met with Lieutenant Bowman, who is the top leader for our transit police unit. And we discussed um, where their deputies are, where they can provide the, the greatest impact in, in terms of keeping our employees and customers safe. And fair emphasis on the SWIFT line is at the top of that list. Um, you and I are in agreement. The SWIFT blue line is, uh, it is a challenge to convince some of those riders to wear a mask. My concern is that after everything we've done to try to convince them to wear a mask, if they choose not to, it's intentional and there could well be a greater risk to our staff trying to convince someone to do something against their will. So it, it is a difficult situation. I, I wish they would wear them, but our judgment at this time is that it is safer for our employees not to engage with a customer who has made an intentional decision to defy the law. We do have an opportunity to call service supervisors if a situation it looks like it's going to escalate and dispatch does have the opportunity to engage transit police um, again anytime it looks like a situation might escalate. We're in agreement. We all want everybody to wear masks. I just don't want to put people at risk asking them to, to, to try an enforcement action against somebody who clearly has already decided they're not going to comply with the governor's uh, proclamation or with, with our request that they wear them. That's a tough situation. I understand, uh, Emma. Thanks very much. And I, I appreciate your response. Thank you very much, Mr. Norton. Yes, thank you. Um, and with that, we'll go to Director Beardsley. Thank you. Uh, this will be a short presentation. If, if you recall, uh, we have been giving you an update each month about the financial impacts, particularly because we were worried about the sales tax revenue uh, declines and how that would affect our operations this year and into the coming years. Uh, Rachel, if you don't mind going to the next slide. The update this month really is a continuing good news story. Uh, our sales tax revenue report for July, uh, which shows um, spending from May came in more favorable than we had anticipated in either our slow recovery or rapid recovery scenario. Um, so what you see in kind of a, the middle with a dashed red and blue line is the actual sales tax revenue. The red and yellow lines are those where we were predicting a decrease from our 2020 budget and our 2019 actuals. We continue to think that we will see an overall decrease for the rest of this year and into next year. That's consistent with the decisions that CFOs are making at other transits across uh, in the region in particular uh, and, and other uh, economic experts we've consulted. Um, and we just continue to update each month. I would say that uh, it's a good news story, um, very much. One thing that we think is happening is that the sales tax, the two month sales tax deferrals that Department of Revenue 
uh, granted to businesses is just now showing up in the July revenue. So we, we had expected to see some lag in uh, May and June and then see that revenue come in in July and August. Um, I had a couple of questions from people about whether or not we should just assume we're not going to see a decline in revenue. And, and the response to that is really, we just think it's too early. Um, Rachel, next slide, please. And, and really just to remind you, there are a number of variables that, um, that we continue to watch. We'll continue to consult uh, with others. The sales tax fluctuation, uh, depth and duration of recession, unemployment, and that includes the uh, continuation or not of $600 additional in unemployment compensation. Ridership, you know, what happens with our new normal, uh, what happens with the vaccine, all of those variables are causing us to think that a uh, conservative approach through the end of the year and into next year are, is the right way to go. Um, so anywhere from right now, I think it's about 12 to 25% uh, decrease in overall revenue is what we're looking at. Really what I wanna leave you with here is um, the, that we are turning, as Emmett said, to making sure that our 2021 budget is put together uh, with a lot of care and that we're looking at our six year development plan in the same way. Rachel, next slide, please. We've talked about this before as we uh, went into this uh, COVID crisis and we're looking at the financial impacts, both in terms of additional costs and decreased revenue. We set forward some guiding principles in terms of how we would decide where to take action. And our strategies have continued to focus on looking at sources like our reserves, where we have built them up over time just for a situation like this. We're tapping into reserves. We've made some prudent decisions about service reductions, changes in employees, uh, reduced spending in certain areas. All of those combine together to support these principles. And, and I'm, I, I just want to uh, say again what Emmett already told you. We have a very high degree of confidence that We've reduced our spending in 2020. We will come in to you with a balanced budget for 2021. And we're developing a, a six-year plan that will be sustainable over six years. Happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Director Beardsley? Okay, thank you. If I, oh, sorry, if I, if I may just say one other thing. We, we have been listing these uh, monthly updates as a separate agenda item. We may, depending on the, um, uh, how, how the sales tax revenue continues to come in, we will certainly continue up monitor, uh, monitoring and updating the finance committee, whether it's a separate standing item at the full board meeting, we'll defer to the finance committee for their uh, recommendations on that, if that's all right with you. Excellent, thank you for that. Right. Thank you. Okay, and that brings us to committee reports. Um, I will start with the executive committee, which met on Friday, July 24th. Myself, uh, Council Member Wright, Council Member Daughtry were present. The CEO provided his report, as he generally does. Uh, the committee reviewed recommendations for greater public visibility to board meeting materials and operations. And I wanna thank staff for quick execution on a number of those items. Um, recommendations are based on staff research into best practices across the industry and in our own jurisdictions of uh, board members here. The goal is to uh, evolve practices and to increase transparency. And uh, there would be, in these will come in three phases. Um, phase A items would be immediately implemented. These items include adding board meeting packets to the board meeting agendas that are posted on our website posting board meeting audio recordings on the website and making permanent the option for a board committee to conduct meetings in a remote format, even when we get beyond uh, the COVID-19 situation uh, and the ban that is currently existing is lifted. Uh, again, I wanna thank the board members and staff for, for this and for the quick execution of those items. Uh, Staff is currently reviewing and preparing recommendations for the additional items to be implemented in this fall, coming fall and in early 2021. And I'll keep you updated uh, as a full board. 
The status of the CEO recruitment was also discussed. More detail will be provided uh, in my chair's report for today on that. And the next executive committee meeting is scheduled for August the 20th at 1130 in the morning. And uh, I will turn it over to council member Todd for finance performance and oversight. Thank you, chair. I'm gonna try this. Is, is this. is this connection working okay for folks? Yeah, that's better so far than your last one. Yeah, thank you. I'm on the phone. Don't hang me up. Uh, so the Finance Performance and Oversight Committee met on Thursday, Ju July 16th. Tom Merrill, Nate Nering, Jan Sweaty, and I attended via Zoom. We have, uh, on the consent agenda today, we have the items B through F are recommended for your approval for expenditures and payroll, and there are no items on the action agenda today. We did receive a special report on the COVID-19 financial update, and Jerry just covered that earlier today. I will comment towards her um, expositional, but a little bit earlier, I think there is value in having Jerry give us the very latest sales tax numbers, because when our committee meets, we are dealing with a month earlier, just like you see in the packet. So I think there is value in having the very latest month's update, because that comes the last couple of days, right, of the month, right before we meet. So I think that's useful to hear that data, but we may be able to roll that into something else. Uh, in your packet, there are a couple of standard reports. The second quarter 2020 transit police report. Sergeant DeWitt briefed the committee on the second quarter uh, report, and a copy is in your packet. You also have the June 2020 sales tax report that is now one month behind, but we uh, overall we collected a $10.5 million in sales tax revenue in June, and that's approximately $1.6 million less than budgeted. And that copy of your report is also in your packet. June 2020 diesel fuel report, year to date through June 2020, we paid an average of $1.39 per gallon for diesel fuel compared to the budgeted amount of $2.25, positive variance of $0.86 cents per gallon. And a copy of that report is in your packet. And finally, the quarterly unaudited financial reports for first and second quarter 2020 due to the impact of COVID-19 initiatives in conducting the annual audit remotely, the unaudited financial reports will be delayed by one month and so we will see that first quarter report included in the September board packet and the second quarter report will be included in the October board packet. And finance staff continue to closely monitor the budgets to act tools as they go. And our next meeting will be on at two o'clock Thursday, August 20th. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Todd. Appreciate that update. That brings us to our consent agenda items. Does anybody wish to pull any of those for further discussion? If not, we'll open the floor for any potential motion on consent. I move approval of the consent agenda. Second. Council member Wright moves. Council member Daughtry seconds. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Anybody abstain? Motion passes unanimously, thank you. Um, that brings us to, there are no action items. And so uh, that brings us to the chair's report. I wanna start by welcoming, and I hope I correct me, Elizabeth, if I pronounced this wrong, but Mayor uh, Callahan, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. I wanna welcome you to your first community transit board meeting, and I think I would echo what Mayor Kelly said earlier, uh, very pleased to see you taking on your new role uh, leading in Stanwood there and uh, looking forward to working with you here in the coming months and, uh, and beyond, uh, both as a fellow mayor and uh, on the Community Transit Board. So welcome. Thank you very uh, much. Regarding the CEO recruitment process that I uh, alluded to briefly in the Executive Committee report, um, I emailed the board and alternates uh, with this news to recap. Um, just wanted to go over a few things. Um, after evaluation of the proposals for search firms, we chose to go with Keras Consulting. Uh, they have extensive experience, as some of you may know, uh, in recruiting CEOs and senior leadership levels for local and state government, as well as, and, and really importantly, uh, many transit and public agencies across the region. So. Um, really, I think a good selection of a firm here to tackle this for us. I'm pleased they'll be working with us uh, to guide the board and agency through this whole process um, for selecting our next CEO here. I had a virtual meeting with them yesterday, 
and it went very well. I was very impressed and um, I think uh, they're really going to serve us well. So you can expect as board members uh, probably starting next week um, or certainly here in the next couple of weeks to uh, be contacted and, and uh, to set up individual meetings with Keras Consulting at which point I would hope and ask that you would provide input on the recruitment, um, kind of on your thoughts regarding the traits and the overall uh, feelings and thoughts that you have on um, the selection process of our next CEO. So your participation is critical in these initial interviews to make sure that we're kind of uh, set up on the right track to get somebody uh, or to get candidates here that we would all be able to um, select from and hopefully we have a, a robust group of those. So thank you in advance for your participation in that with Keras. Um, this month will be used to finalize recruitment strategy and materials and works towards a posting of this national recruitment in early September. You can expect regular updates on the recruitment process at board meetings and via email. And I wanna thank uh, Deb and Cesar in particular for the staff support that you are providing on this. Um, it's very uh, well organized and uh, I appreciate the ability as board chair to uh, make decisions in, in conjunction with the executive committee and, and, and the, the whole board at key points. Um, but I also greatly uh, appreciate the staff support, which is really necessary to make this robust effort that we're undertaking. Devin Cesar have been great with that. I, I also appre appreciate very much Emmett's input. I had a good conversation with Emmett yesterday afternoon, at which point I asked that he would uh, Please feel free to share his thoughts. You know, nobody knows more about how to run this agency uh, than our current CEO. And I think we all know and trust that he has the best interests of CEO at heart, obviously now in his remaining months here, but even beyond. And so uh, anyway, I look forward to the remainder of this process and our next regular board meeting is scheduled for a couple days after Labor Day, three days after Labor Day, that'd be, or no, I'm sorry, it would be a few days before Labor Day on September the 3rd at 3 p.m. and we will be meeting in the same format as we are today. And with that, I will turn it over to our CEO, Emmett, for your uh, CEO report. All right, thank you very much. Uh, I too would like to start by welcoming Mayor Callahan to our governing board. Um, have had the opportunity to, to meet the mayor at some previous chamber events up in Stanwood. And I hope that in uh, the remaining time that I have here, we'll have a chance to meet. Like uh, council member Nate Nearing, I also am familiar with the conference table at Wayne. So I hope you have uh, an equally great choice of uh, conference tables in the, when, we, when I come up to visit. So I look forward to that. Um, let's see, in the category of partnerships and advocacy, I wanna thank uh, Mayor Nicola Smith for inviting myself and our staff to her council meeting to provide an update on our uh, Orange Line design construction project. Uh, that was just last, uh, I think earlier this week, in fact. Um, regarding other regional partnerships, our mobility partnership, uh, briefly for those of you who may not be familiar, the mobility partnership is a forum of about 10 CEOs who represent uh, six Puget Sound transit agencies plus uh, City of Seattle Department of Transportation, the Puget Sound Regional Council, the Region 10 Director of the Federal Transit Administration, Assistant Secretary for Ferries of WashDOT. I think that's about it. But that group of 10, that forum is called the Mobility Partnership. Uh, during, we have always met on a regular basis to share uh, best practices across agencies. In the early days of COVID, we met daily for several months. Then we cut back to three times a week. <clears throat> We're now meeting a couple of times a week, once to focus on COVID, once to focus on other issues of general interest across uh, public transportation in, in the Puget Sound region. Um, also, I wanna let you know that my uh, peer, the general manager at King County Metro, Rob Gannon, has announced that uh, he will resign from King County Metro to accept a position as chief financial officer for the city of Missoula. Uh, his hometown, uh, hometown boy returning home. Uh, Rob has been a great, uh, fantastic uh, regional partner, uh, fantastic leader at King County Metro. He'll be succeeded by a 35 year veteran at, uh, at Metro, a man by the name of Terry White. 
Terry worked his way up through multiple levels at King County Metro and is, is generally regarded as being very, very highly qualified to take over as the interim director for King County Metro. Regarding Everett Transit, the city of Everett is evaluating options for how to continue to provide Everett, uh, Everett Transit service to its citizens. They continue to um, evaluate three options. One of those options is uh, what we call a, a unification of their system and ours. Uh, we, we prefer that term unification, but merger may, uh, may describe it in your minds uh, equally well. It would be a complete consolidation of the two systems uh, in order for our combined resources to provide service to the citizens of the city of Everett. Our Director of Planning and Development, Roland Behe, leads that effort. He has staff involved on a regular basis. We have awarded a contract to a third party consulting firm that is assisting in data gathering uh, analysis and uh, helping us respond to requests for information from the city of Everett as they continue their evaluation. Um, that process will uh, continue throughout the rest of this year. Later this month, the Everett City Council will convene and receive a staff report on their, their progress and status of that evaluation so far this year. On the legislative front, I think the uh, broad-based consensus now is that uh, is not to expect a special session. And we are working with our contract lobbyists and our internal government uh, affairs staff to develop a draft legislative agenda for 20, uh, 2021 that we will bring to the executive committee and then subsequently to the full board for review before our 2021 ledge agenda is finally adopted. On the federal front, there's a lot of activity, um, but to go in that, into that would just be an activity report. There really uh, has been, there have been no significant developments uh, on the federal front. The primary uh, focus of our efforts, uh, as far as the federal activity goes, is to monitor the, uh, act, the monitor activity on a uh, surface transportation authorization bill. Uh, so we'll watch it carefully. We'll continue to report to you if there are any significant developments, but nothing uh, during this period. I want to talk a little bit about the employment experience at our agency, <clears throat> more specifically about layoffs and furloughs. Um, when we reduced our service footprint, we reduced the number of full-time and part-time coach operators that would be needed. Um, we started out uh, on day one needing to lay off a significant number of full and part-time employees. Uh, through a series of voluntary programs, we now are at a point where we have right-sized our workforce and we've been able to do that with zero involuntary layoffs for our full-time coach operators. Um, very, very, very pleased uh, at the work of Cesar Portillo and a, a number of teammates working with him to develop and offer those voluntary programs that um, that avoid involuntary separation for, for folks who otherwise might not be in as, as good a position to accept uh, the loss of their job. Uh, we did wind up needing to lay off some part-time employees. Hopefully the uh, layoff period will not last too long and they are eligible for automatic recall and reverse seniority order uh, once uh, we need to bring them back into the workforce. Also in our maintenance department, uh, likewise, we made staffing adjustments and Dave Richards and his crew, uh, again, were able to use voluntary separation programs to avoid uh, layoffs with the exception of two vehicle service workers uh, who, um, who will be laid off. I mentioned earlier, I made reference to a new chief operating officer. Um, I had informed the board many, many months ago of our intention to fill a chief operating officer position. We recruited for that position and I'm pleased to uh, share with you that I've selected um, Steve Kim, who is our former director of transportation, to be promoted to serve in the role of chief operating officer. As part of this uh, modest little restructure, uh, Steve's former position director of transportation will not be refilled in its same form. So the, uh, the effect on our executive leadership team for now is to remain at the same size, 
um, and there will, uh, Steve will, will represent the interests of the transportation department as chief operating officer. At the same time, our director of maintenance, Dave Richards, effective August 1st, is reporting to our chief operating officer. Dave has been a, a, a nearly 25 year member uh, uh, employee at Community Transit, a 15 year member of the executive leadership team. Dave, uh, Dave will continue to report dotted line and participate in executive leadership team activities until further notice. Uh, regarding our ATU labor contract, that contract is set to expire December 31st of this year. Uh, the contract that is in place called for the parties to exchange written proposals on July 1. Um, the ATU requested additional that they have additional time uh, to poll their employees in, in order to develop a proper proposal. Um, so we have not yet exchanged proposals and <clears throat> we while we are uh, very, very nearly prepared to provide a written proposal to the ATU. Uh, we're on standby until both parties um, get to the point where they're, uh, they're ready to submit proposals and start bargaining. Um, uh, again, uh, on the financial stewardship front, um, not talking about the numbers, but rather talking about our annual audit by the state auditor's office. We'll be wrapping that audit up by the end of this month. At this point, it's very late in the audit. It is not, it is not completed yet, but it is very late in the, um, in the audit. And we are expecting to earn our 25th consecutive clean audit. Um, an amazing record of clean audits by uh, Lori Fox, our controller, uh, her boss, Jerry Beardsley, the director of, of administration, and and a, and a very and a large team of folks from across the agency who who develop good policies, implement good policies, make sure they're followed, and uh, protect the assets of our uh, our our customer owners. So fantastic job on that audit. The the uh, state auditors will directly schedule an exit conference with you all. That'll come from them to you in accordance with state law. They're anticipating to schedule that exit conference for late in the month of August. So um, <clears throat> keep an eye out for that because you won't want to miss those festivities. That's a shame. We need a way to laugh on in virtual meetings. Some of you have a, we have a laugh icon out there. And uh, project wise, we have a, uh, we have stayed on scope and schedule with most all of our major capital projects. Notably, I just want to let you know that our Swift Orange line stays uh, on schedule in project development. And at this point, we fully expect to have it uh, constructed and operational in time to connect to Link Light Rail in Linwood in 2024. We've had another project to upgrade our existing customer trip planner. Uh, into a, a much, very much new and improved uh, product that will make it a lot easier for customers to travel, uh, uh, schedule a, a trip from wherever they are to where they want to be. I'm very pleased with the progress on that. And also our facilities master plan. Uh, that is a four year, 75 million, three phase project to expand our maintenance and operating capacity at our Merrill Creek operating base. We have, uh, we have awarded construction contracts for the first phase of that project and construction will essentially begin this week. We have awarded design contracts for subsequent phases and I expect we will stay on schedule to complete that base modernization and expansion uh, program all, all phases by 2024. And I'm gonna, uh, Going to ask if uh, Council Member Todd might update you during um, his report on uh, PSRC activities, uh, finalizing grant awards. I will uh, I will say notably regarding grant awards, Melissa Colley, June Duvall, uh, and their staff uh, are folks who write our grant applications and pursue competitive grant funding were successful at the PSRC and two addition, two new grants helping to fund the Orange Line uh, project. 
uh, two of them for a total of over five, five million additional dollars that came our, our way from successful competition, uh, regional competition for uh, funds at the PSRC. So great, uh, great work by Roland, June Duvall, Melissa Colley, and uh, Mike. Don't underestimate Mike Todd's voice uh, down there as our representative uh, on the PSRC. Um, lastly, well, we have a program we call Van Go. Um, most of you on our board are familiar with this. It's not about art, not an art program. But for those of you who are new, when we retire our van pool vans from service, um, while they're ready to be retired from our type of duty cycle, they still have service life in them. And we have had a practice for many years now of granting those surplus vehicles to 501c3 organizations within Snohomish County who uh, can attest to using them to provide public transportation for the public good. Um, we are about to kick that program off again. You will be receiving materials uh, notifying you of, of the uh, program eligibility, number of vehicles available. Uh, since two, the year 2000, we have granted 146 vans now to organizations across, uh, 501c3 organizations across the county. So in your activities, if you know an organization that you think could benefit from having uh, one of those vans av available to help transport their constituencies, a good opportunity for you to connect with your network. And that completes my report, believe it or not. That was the short version. <laughs> Thank you, Emmett. Um, appreciate that report. That brings us to board communication. And we will go ahead and uh, I'll go down the list I have and I'll start with our newest board member, Mayor Callahan. I'm sorry, I missed what you said. Oh, we just set aside a portion of the meeting at the end for board communication. If, and if, if you don't have anything, that's just fine. But if you wish to say anything, this is your opportunity for that. No, I'm all right. Okay, thank you. Council Member Daughtry. I just want to take this opportunity to uh, welcome Mayor Callahan to the, uh, to the board and welcome to your role in Stanwood. Look forward to working with you in the next couple of years. And that's all I have, no reports. Thank you. Council Member Merrill. Yes, I just also wanted to uh, say welcome aboard, uh, Mayor Callahan. And other than that, nothing to report this time. Thank you. And Council Member Nearing. I did also want to welcome uh, Mayor Callahan. Excited to work with you. And uh, I think that's it for me. Thanks. Thank you. Our labor representative, uh, Mr. Norton. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I also welcome uh, Mayor Callahan. It's good to have another Irishman on the board. And uh, Emmett, I, I want Emmett to know, I want you, Emmett, and Rob Gannon to know that it takes us, the unions, years to train a CEO. And now that you and Rob have improved significantly, you both decide to leave. I got to tell you, we feel this is just not fair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> well said. Well said. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you, Labor Representative Norton. Well said. <laughs> Council Member Sweaty. Uh, actually, I do have something. Uh, at okay. the last board meeting, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. At the last board meeting, when Emmett retired, I said at that time that I would like to have the opportunity to write something down. So I have written a um, my summation of um, Emmett, and I would like to read it. Won't take three minutes. What a difference six years makes. I came on the board in January of 2014 as an alternate, the year before Emmett was named CEO. After Emmett took over, I noticed a difference right away, but couldn't quite put my finger on it. Took me several months, 
But one month when I walked into the boardroom, it hit me. Everyone was smiling, talking to each other and talking to me. Everyone was happy. Emmett hit the ground running. He sent several of us out in the county to talk to legislators to get authority to run Proposition 1. Prop 1 passed and set community transit up financially for our expansions. Emmett put the right people in the right positions, created the customer experience position, which reached out to all of our customers. Technology was updated and programs were created to help our customers have easier access to routes and trip planners. Under his leadership, we added the Seaway Transit Center, the Swift Green Line, and plans for extension of the Blue Line, the Orange Line, and additional Swift Lines in the future. His leadership also implemented the next generation of ORCA and updated the radio systems. As a board member, the one thing I noticed that to me made one of the biggest impacts was his involvement in the communities in Snohomish County. Emmett became very visible in local organizations, county boards, and connected with transit organizations from Skagit County to Pierce County. Emmett put a face to community transit that just wasn't there before. There were people in Snohomish County who could not have told you the name of the transit buses. That is no longer true. Community transit is well known, respected, and has become an integral part of Snohomish County. I am really sorry to see Emmett leave, but I wish him the very best in his future endeavors. He has made a huge difference in the lives of the staff and this company. His legacy will live on long after he is gone. Thank you. Thank you, well said, and I, I'm certain that our CEO appreciates that. Thank you, Council Member Schwede. Um, Mayor Smith. Yeah, I just um, also wanted to add my uh, welcoming to uh, Mayor Callahan, and I hope that we can meet in person soon. We have a great uh, mayor women leadership team all the way up down, up and down I-5. So uh, welcome to that group. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Todd. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I wanna also express my thanks and appreciation for Lori Fox and everybody in the finance department. Lori is just lives the numbers and she worries about the numbers and she does a fantastic job with the numbers. And so I encourage people to come to that exit conference and help celebrate it 25 years of good audits in a row. That's gonna be great. Uh, Emmett also set me up to talk about PSRC. I'm the representative for Community Transit down at Transportation Policy Board, but the grant awards that we were that were completed there have now gone through the Executive Committee as well, where I also represent Snohomish County Cities, and those were all passed. And so the, the agency should indeed be proud of the, the uh, grant request that we put in for the competitive grants and also appreciative from the money come from the, coming from the feds that's based on both demographic information and our earned share for the kinds of services that we provide. Um, so good job to Community Transit, good job uh, to PSRC for helping to divvy up those funds, which are very complicated and very uh, controversial sometimes. And I think I mentioned it before, but I just wanna let you know, it's still going on. Uh, there is a discussion that's going to happen. We can't stop it from happening. And it's a good discussion, but it's, it has to do with how the money that comes from the feds through the Federal Transit Authority, uh, Federal Transit Administration comes to us. And there is the county to the south called Pierce County who says, looks to see that they are the same size as Snohomish County. So they expect to get equal money to us, but instead they get quite a bit fewer dollars when they look at the bottom line. And so we're gonna get into this equity versus equality discussion. There's a lot of mis misunderstandings about how the money is awarded to regions and how it is earned. Uh, I think there's people have lost sight of the fact that Pierce Transit collects six tenths of a cent every, of every sales tax um, on the sales tax and we collect 1.2. We've got our voters to vote for twice, as, twice the rate. And so we provide different kinds of service. And so the nature of the service we provide and the good job that our staff has done means we do quite well in the 
federal, federal uh, funding area. Uh, we will continue to have this discussion down there, but if you hear from colleagues in Pierce County about how this isn't just fair, uh, nod politely and don't argue with them. We will have a good discussion, but we need to make sure that our voters who have decided to spend a lot more on transit to give great service throughout our county are not, um, don't lose out, don't get short shrift in the whole thing because um, it's not equal uh, for a reason, There's, but there is equity. So if there's any questions, people should feel free to contact me later. I will work today work with staff on making sure the uh, good fight is fought down at uh, PSRC on our behalf. Thanks. Thank you, Councilmember Todd. And uh, Councilmember Wright. No real comments. I just want to also welcome Mayor Callahan from Stanwood. We're really excited to have her on the board. So, and we do look forward to meeting her in person. <laughs> yes. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, we do not have need of an executive session. Am I right on that, CEO Heath? Correct. But we do have one other piece of board related uh, business that we need to take care of and that is to um, elect an officer with the with Mayor Kelly no longer being on the board that did create a vacancy uh, in our executive committee and our with our officers so kind of as a reminder uh, board officers are generally elected at the February board meeting each year the positions include uh, board chair vice chair and secretary for one year terms uh, currently I'm the chair, obviously, and then our secretary is Councilmember Daughtry. Per agency bylaws, the vice chair serves on the executive committee. So whomever fills Mayor Kelly's spot uh, will also serve on the executive committee. With the chair, the secretary, and the vice chair as well. So one of the things we'll do here is take nominations from the board. Any voting member of the board, including current officers, may be nominated. Any board member can nominate and board members may self-nominate as well if they choose to do so. The officers may, if reelected, serve consecutive terms. Voting members may vote or they may abstain. The person with the majority of votes will take the position of vice chair. And with that, I will go ahead and open the floor for any potential nominations for the vice chair position that was held by Mayor Kelly. I'd like to nominate. Mr. Chair, this is Mike Todd. Yes, Go ahead. Council Member Go Todd. Go ahead, Jen. Oh. oh. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I would like to nominate Mike Todd. Council Member Todd has been nominated. Council Member Todd, did you wish to speak? Yeah, I would like to nominate Ken, Kim Daughtry. He's presently on the executive committee as a secretary. I think it'd be appropriate for him to be promoted, quote unquote, promoted into that spot. Kim has been with the board for quite a while and knows the agency very well. I would be, I think we'd be well represented to have him serve as our vice chair. Okay, thank you for that. That's two nominations. It should be noted uh, in light of the current nominations that if council member Daughtry were moved to the vice chair position, that would then open up the secretary position, which we would fill today as well. So um, just keep that in mind as you uh, consider your, your votes here. Um, any other nominations? Okay. We will go ahead then and uh, um, take votes. And so I'm gonna go ahead, uh, Rachel, can I ask your advice since we have two nominations, is it best to go and have each board member name who they are voting for or just take each nomination and do a yay or nay? It would be best if we could do each nomination separately. So first, uh, all in favor of the first candidate, and then we'll do okay. a second for the second candidate. Okay. Mr. Chair, could I clarify something? Yes, go ahead, Council Member Wright. Uh, since it was uh, Council Member Todd that made the second nomination of Kim, would he want to remove himself from this? Just out of curiosity, since he was the one who made the second nomination, or did he want to still be considered? Thank you for that. Council Member I would, I would be pleased to do so if that falls within the rules, because I really believe that Kim Daughtry should have that position, and I will be voting for Kim. I believe that does fall within the rules. Uh, if staff has a different view, let me know, please. No, that would fall within the rules. Okay, thank you. So, Mr. Chair, may I make a, may I make a motion that we adopt 
that we uh, nom uh, vote for and place Kim Daughtry in the vice chair position by unanimous consent. Thank you for that. Second. Um, okay, we have a motion and a second. I did. Uh, I believe it's Councilmember Nearing on the second. Any any final discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Does anybody wish to abstain? The motion passes unanimously. Congratulations, uh, Councilmember Daughtry. You just got a promotion um, to vice chair. <laughs> so, so, Mr. Chair, in light of uh, my promotion, thank you very much, everyone. I appreciate uh, everybody's uh, vote on that. And and but I would like to uh, continue this. Uh, the discussion then into the secretary, and I would like to nominate Mike Todd for the position of secretary. Thank you for that. Are there any other nominations for the open position of secretary? Okay, we'll close nominations. And uh, why don't we just uh, put that to, the, to a vote? Raise your hand, please, if you vote for Councilmember Todd as secretary. Rachel, can you My see hands all up. The, keep your hands okay. up? Just for okay. And what about uh, what about you, uh, Councilmember Todd? Is your hand up on the phone? Yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> okay. Wonderful. It looks like we have everyone in favor. Unanimous. Thank mm -hmm. you for that. So, Councilmember Todd, congratulations! You've been unanimously elected as secretary, which will add you to the executive committee as well. Um, and, and so the executive committee will now consist of myself as chair, vice chair, council member Daughtry, secretary, council member Todd and past chair, council member Wright. Um, and I think that's a, a great decision by the board that in a, kind of a crucial time for the executive committee when we're selecting a new CEO, we have folks who have been through that before and been experienced on the board. So I, I'm really pleased personally to have this team uh, alongside to for this important time in the agency. So thank you board for these decisions today. And um, with that, that completes that process. And I don't believe there's any other business related to the corporation, but if there is any, I'll open it up and CEO Heath, you have your hand up. Yeah, thanks. Just a couple of quick things um, regarding the small city selection of uh, their delegate for our board. Um, I wanted to let the rest of the board members know of our appreciation for Mayor Russell Wieda, um, who also joined. Uh, the rest of you have been here today, but um, uh, Council Member Mike Gallagher, Council Member Tom Merrill, Mayor Russell Wieda, Mayor Callahan were the four delegates from the small cities who took time out of their day and schedules to meet and uh, elect that uh, representative. So I just wanted to make sure that all four um, got uh, notice for that. Thank you. And I'll um, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I just had a couple of closing comments. Um, I just wanted to say uh, thank you to Council Member Wright for assuming uh, Mayor Kelly's position as chair of the Strategic Alignment and Capital Projects Committee. I'd reached out to her and asked her to take that over. And so that gives us an experienced hand there. So thank you, Council Member Wright, for that, for being willing to do that. And now that we have selected a new board officer and a new board <coughs> member, um, as uh, CEO Heath just mentioned, I will make some slight adjustments to the board standing committee assignments because we need to get Mayor Callahan on a committee. So staff will route the revised committee list probably early next week to you all. And did you have something else, Emmett? I did, just very briefly. I also want to thank um, Councilmember Daughtry for his continued willingness to serve in the vice chair role. Look, look forward to that. Likewise to council member Todd also wanted to uh, assure you all how well represented you all are by council member Todd's service down at the PSRC. I, I probably don't need to tell any of you that. He's very active, he's very well <laughs> informed, he's very influential and he does an amazing job of representing your interest at the PSRC. And lastly, uh, how could I not Acknowledge the very, very kind words from uh, Council Member Schwetti. Um, Jan, thank you so much. I, I appreciate the kind words. That's all I have, Mayor Neary. Thank you for that. And uh, we appreciate all of your involvement in today's Zoom meeting, uh, board members, staff, and the public that has joined us. I want to thank you personally for 
and on behalf of the board for uh, uh, today's involvement. We look forward to um, the rest of August, the committee meetings, and then we will see you again on September the 3rd for the board meeting. Stay safe and thanks everybody. Have a great afternoon. And uh, do we need a motion to adjourn our attorney, I'll ask? Or can I just adjourn the meeting? You do it. Just adjourn. Right. Meeting adjourned. Thanks everybody. Thanks everybody. Bye.